Last week, I got my GCSE results for the 2023 exams. And on one hand, I'm really grateful to have done really well, but I also messed up really bad. Being that far still makes me sure. But in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to do to get these good grades across all your subjects, right from the very first day of year 11 up until May. Now let's be real, however much you really want those grade nines, that fire inside of you is only gonna last for a couple of days, or maybe a few weeks, because you, like every other year 11, will just say, oh, it's only September, I'll start revising properly for my real marks. And that's not wrong. You have to remember year 11 is a marathon and not a race. You'll win right in the end when everyone else is tired of last minute revision, but you're not because you've stayed consistent throughout the year. And so you'll have that energy to sprint to the finish line. Or instead, I want you to take this September lightly. Just make sure you stay up to date with your homework, which you'll start to notice will just be exam questions that your teacher set, and that helps you anyway, and revise properly for any tests that you happen to have this month. Because remember, any practice test that you get in year 11, that will help you for the real thing. But something I wish I did sooner in year 11 was to really just sit down early enough and ask myself, what am I really weak at? And after spending some time thinking, I would have liked to write three subjects down, just three, and then I would have liked to search for as many resources I could get for them, whether that be YouTube videos, pre-made flashcards, revision websites, you name it, just anything that I could use later on to prepare for my mocks and ultimately my GCSEs if they provided me with good results. Now, if French or English seem to be one of your weakest subjects, then stick around to the end of this video because I'll tell you how you can get access to my notes that I use for those two subjects that allowed me to get grade 8 or 9 in them. All right, you reached late October and this is where you're slowly starting to reach the peak of the roller coaster. Remember when I told you to write down your three weakest subjects? Well, now it's time to finally do weekly practice on them. I remember what my class did this year for English was every Friday we would do an essay on either Macbeth, Inspector Calls, Christmas Carol, or even any of the 15 poems. And at first, I didn't take English seriously. I didn't take any of these essays seriously because I didn't think about revising for English literature simply because I was overwhelmed by the fact of how much stuff I'd have to learn to get a decent grade like a grade 7. And that did mean that the first three essays I did, I flopped. I averaged like 15 out of 30. But the good thing about that was it pushed me to start revising. Not a large amount, but at least start reading some analysis before the next essay. And sure enough, that quickly changed to an 18 out of 30 and then an occasional 22 out of 30. And after months of essays, it's finally able to reach the dream grade 9, 27 out of 30 essay. But what's interesting was I wasn't as happy when I got 27 out of 30 compared to when I got 18 out of 30. And the reason for that was when I got 18 out of 30, it was a breakthrough moment for me. It helped me realize that I can do well in any subject, I can improve regardless of how hard that subject is if I just put my mind to it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that prioritizing practice in your weakest subjects this year will definitely get you closer to those grade nines. Let's fast forward to the end of December where you've now received your November or December mocks results. Now what? The biggest mistake you can make going from January onwards is to completely change your revision technique for a subject that you're working at in grade 7 or above because a more sensible approach would just to be add on another revision method. For example, let's say you got a grade 7 for physics, but you feel like there wasn't any problems with not understanding any of the topics. Well, that means there was probably a lack of exam practice, which trust me, deciding on how many exam questions to do can be a make or break case in getting your dream grade. Why I say this is because these last couple of months after January go by way too quickly. And what funny thing that I remember is I was trying to think of when I should start revising in January, February time. And by the time I fully put my head down, I was already into March. So there's just not enough time to completely change your revision plans unless unless you're working an extremely low grade for a subject. And in that case, you wouldn't have to start much earlier than March. And if you are getting an extremely low grade, then you've probably heard of passive revision techniques, revision techniques that don't help at all. For example, rereading, highlighting. And let me clarify with you something. If you think watching videos for concept heavy subjects like sciences is any better, then you're completely wrong. Watching these YouTube videos only helps you understand the topic, but to actually get the highest grades, you have to do active revision. That means memorizing the information that you need to, applying that to practice questions and doing full exam papers. That's what gets you the highest grades. Okay, so in that part of the video where I didn't really want to talk, but I got a grade five in computer science. 
but I want to use that as a lesson so that you guys don't have to go through the pain of getting a grade which you didn't want by avoiding this one mistake. Well, one thing I noticed during my GCSEs was that when you're actually in the exam period, it will be impossible to revise for a subject that isn't tomorrow because it just feels scary to revise something like computer science when you know that all your friends are just focusing on English literature for tomorrow. And that is right. And so to avoid this, you have to practically spend the whole of March or April grinding your weaker subjects because trust me you don't want to have to go through revising a whole chapter's worth of content until 11 or 12 the night before your exam because that's completely unhealthy and i did that for a lot of exams and i know how much that lack of eight hours of sleep during my exams how much that affected my performance for my gcc exams and i'm going to make sure i avoid that for my a levels now i did tell you guys early in the video that i was going to share my notes for english literature where i got grade nine and for French speaking where I got 61 out of 70. Start off with French speaking first, right there. It's basically a collection of 73 of the most commonly asked questions during your French GCC speaking exam. I coupled that with, uh, with a grade eight, or basically a grade nine model answer that I came up with. I'll be linked in the description. It's a reasonable price. I'm not asking for like 20 pounds just for those notes. I know you guys would find that useful. So that's why I kept it at a low price. And for English literature, I basically linked below all my practice essays. They're not all grade nine. I'm not saying that they might even be grade seven, but I just want to link them below. They're free for you guys if you want to use them as a reference when you're writing your own essays to see why I practice writing my essays so that I could get a grade nine. And that leads me on to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're going into year 11, then good luck. Hope you smash a GCSE and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.